Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much for uh, joining this showcase today. It's our first regional showcase of the year. So welcome, and we hope that all the information and the representatives that are joining today, that are collaborating with us, and uh, that all that information that they provide to you is very useful for your uh, objectives and your dream to go to the US and to study uh, in the United States. Um, as you can see, your microphones and videos will remain off during the, um, the presentation uh, since we will not be able to interact. But all your questions, when they are explaining about the topic of today, please feel free to type all your questions through the chat. And uh, this session will be recorded. Uh, so uh, in the future, if you want to go back to some information, you will have this as a tool so you can do that. Um, the topic of today is very interesting because uh, we have seen as Education U USA that a lot of our advisees and a lot of people that uh, come to us, they don't know about community colleges and they don't know about the two plus two programs. So the topic of today that we are offering to you is an accessible path to a US bachelor's degree and uh, the two plus two programs. Um, this is the dynamic. We will first have the participation of Lane Community College with University of Cincinnati. So you can type your questions when they are presenting um, and I will uh, show you the format. So either you uh, send questions through the chat to Lane Community College or to the four-year institution. Uh, the University of Cincinnati, or feel free as well to send your questions to Education USA and we will be able to uh, answer your questions. Then we will follow um, with other of institutions, which is Colleges of Contra Costa, with uh, UC Santa Cruz, University of California, Santa, Santa Cruz. And we will go through some of the questions that you may have. And then after that um, session of questions and answers, we will continue with St. Uh, Petersburg, uh, Petersburg, sorry, college, and then uh, with uh, University of Central Florida. Uh, please look, um, you can see there uh, in, in, uh, in the box, you can uh, see the names. Please look for Q and A and send your questions to that, um, to, to that Education USA advisor. So if you have any other comment and you want to make those and send those comments to everyone, then you will look for um, everyone in the chat. And the format that we are um, asking you to use is to type the name of the, the um, institution that you want to ask something, or if it is uh, for both, then you can just type both. Uh, then your question, as you can see, you can type your questions, followed by your name and followed by your email address. So if we don't have time for the questions live, then uh, we will send your questions to the, represent the representatives joining today. Uh, what is Education USA? Um, we are very happy that today uh, a lot of people from different countries are joining us. Um, so perhaps you have already heard about Education USA. We are a great global network of advising centers worldwide. Uh, and we are part of the US State Department, uh, Department's Bureau of Educational and Cultural Affairs, ECA. We are as well your free access to introductory information uh, when you are interested to study in the US, so you are prospective international students. Uh, in uh, Education USA, well, in the world, we are around 430 uh, advising centers, so you uh, for sure will find the closest center to you, and in more than 175 countries. Uh, one of our objectives is uh, uh, precisely promotes U.S. higher education around the world. We are still the first destination um, of uh, interest for international students. Our target uh, are you, uh, international students, precisely, uh, that you want to, to go to a U.S. university. 
US higher education community. So we collaborate with our representatives so from different universities in the US and with local educational institutions in your own countries. Um, our um, services is to provide to you free advice. So it's accurate, current and comprehensive information about uh, the full range that, uh, of accredited US higher education institutions. So you can make your search and select the ones you are interested on. And um, we are always organizing um, planning and delivering info sessions one-on-one -on -one sessions and uh, webinars, workshops, showcases like this one, seminars. We are part of Mobility First and Educational First. Education USA has uh, its own every year. And uh, we can provide this to you in center. Unfortunately, not right now because we are in contingency. So uh, in these pandemic times, we are not at our uh, offices and you will find Education USA advising centers in US embassies, consulates, Fulbright commissions, binational centers, universities at, uh, at your country, and uh, nonprofit organizations. In those spaces, we can have as well materials and booklets and guides that we can provide to you for free uh, for your preparation uh, for application for admission to yeah, US university. Uh, we are making outreach. Uh, so we go directly to some of the institutions uh, in your country and we have participation um, in the events of other organizations. We, will, we go to the place where this is um, delivered and virtually like today. Um, in overall, well, a community college is a two-year public institution, and um, you will find uh, that in the name of the institutions, a lot of them are universities and colleges, those uh, with four-year, those offering four-year uh, preparation, so those are four-year uh, private or public institutions. As you can see on your screen, uh, you can find that community colleges uh, provide lower tuition price. Uh, it's uh, two years where they will provide general education courses and you can get in two years associate degrees. So for instance, if you gain associate of arts and if you want to continue um, the four model, the four year um, system, then you can transfer to a four year institution and you then will transfer your credits to get a bachelor's of arts, or, or if you were studying an associate of science, then you will transfer to uh, study then uh, the, the other two years to get a bachelor's of science in uh, this four year institution. They will uh, explain this in more detail. A community college, well, uh, they have smaller class size, so it's more individualized attention uh, is an affordable pathway because they have lower prices um, and they offer different academic programs. As you can see, high school completion plus English as a second language, uh, ESL, career training and the two plus two program, which is the topic of today. And uh, so if you can see um, in your screen, um, you, you see that if you want to go into a community college to start your studies, then year one and year two are general education courses for the flexibility that the edu education in US offer to you uh, to, to have uh, different courses and to decide what you really want to specialize on. Then you will get into those two years, you will earn an associate degree and you can transfer that uh, to year three to a university or college a four year institution. And then there you will study courses that are um, your area of study to earn your bachelor degree after uh, other two years in, in that institution. Um, the requirements, as you can see, both community colleges, the two year institutions and the four year institutions, they will require an online application, application fee, and in transcripts, English proficiency test. You can see that the four year institution will require different scores, but at a community college, they can admit people with intermediate level. 
Uh, then um, you can see as well that you will have more requirements in order to get it to a, a four-year institution. So uh, the standardized admission tests, show, such as SAT, ACT, letters of recommendation, essays, and a portfolio if you are into visual arts, design, architecture. Um, now we will present our first um, representatives. So we are very happy to have with us uh, uh, Carla, uh, it's a Lane uh, Community College. And uh, we have uh, the representative of the community college. We ask um, uh, Carla to please uh, share your screen so you can present to our audience. Can, is Carla Anderson, Associate Director, and followed by Mr. Jason Chambers, who is Assistant Director of International Admissions Transfer at the University of Cincinnati. Thank you very much, Martha. Great overview. And Welcome to all of the students. Congratulations, you've come to the right place today to learn a lot and to be exposed to some fantastic colleges and universities in the United States for you to consider. And of course, one of those is Lane Community College. And today I'm going to talk about our direct pathway to University of Cincinnati as well. So I'm your presenter for Lane. My name is Carla Anderson. I would encourage you to grab some paper and a pen. There's going to be a lot of information you'll want to write down, including my email address. You'll see it there on the screen and you'll see it at the end of the presentation again. But I know that we are all eager to interact with you and I enjoy getting emails. So feel free to reach out anytime you have questions. Martha gave a great overview of community colleges and I'll just continue by saying there are more than 1,000 community colleges in the United States serving more than 13 million people in all 50 states and around the world. It's a common system with about 45% of Americans also earning bachelor's degrees after starting in community college. So this is a great path for you to consider. Community colleges focus on preparing students for their bachelor's degree as well as their future careers. And we love to support students and promote your academic success. Community colleges do have smaller class sizes, personal support and attention for you, typically in a smaller environment and also cost savings. You can save a lot in your first two years. A lot of flexibility to explore different areas if you're not quite sure what you want to focus your career on. An easier application process, typically with more intake options. And we do have open admissions. So we welcome you and we can launch you off to great university partners after your first two years. Lane Community College is a fully accredited public college in the United States. And each year we welcome about 400 international students from over 50 countries. And they enjoy studying together with about 10,000 American students. We're in the city of Eugene, in the state of Oregon on the west coast of the United States. There's Washington and then Oregon and then California on the west coast. Eugene is a small city, a very safe and friendly college town with a lot of students. We have Lane Community College, University of Oregon and Northwest Christian University in our city. And we have very mild weather here in Eugene. It does not get extremely hot or extremely cold. We usually do not have snow here, but we do have snow in the mountains always. And we do get a lot of rain. So the atmosphere is very fresh and there's lots of nature and trees and flowers here. 
Of course, we offer the traditional two plus two program, studying two years with us and transferring to a university. All of our courses are accredited we have fantastic internships where you can get hands-on experience in the area where you are studying. Another benefit of community colleges is that after you graduate, you will earn your associate degree. Oh, my border kind of eats this up. <laughs> but you will earn your two-year associate's degree. And once you have that, you actually have the opportunity to do what we call Optional Practical Training, OPT, for one year in the United States. So you actually have the opportunity to work for up to 12 months. Now, after Lane, our graduates have transferred successfully to more than 90 universities all around the United States. One of our top options is University of Cincinnati. And Jason from that university is here with me today and will present in a few minutes. In the picture, you see Jimmy. Jimmy is one of our graduates from Vietnam who transferred to University of Cincinnati and received a large scholarship. And he's there now and he absolutely loves it. And we have had lots of students transfer to other universities as well. And we have university partner options in Australia New Zealand, France, and the UK. So if you'd like to transfer to another country, that's another option. We offer more than 50 options for academic programs. Some of the most popular are business, engineering, computer science, IT, aviation, ESL or English as a second language, hospitality management, and more. We also have short-term programs program options if you'd like to just come for a short-term experience. And in this picture, you see another one of our awesome graduates, Marcus, and he also transferred to U University of Cincinnati. We have a special two plus one program with Wren School of Business. So this is actually a three-year bachelor's degree focusing on business. You study two years at Lane, and then you transfer to Ren School of Business in France and you would finish in three years. All classes are in English at Lane and in France and you get to experience two countries and two cultures. So this is a, another fantastic option. At Lane, we have scholarships for new international students like you. The awards range from 500 to $3,500. Remember to keep your pin out. If you didn't get my email address yet, you can get it at the end. And I'm happy to send you a link to the scholarship application. We have free tutoring and again, fantastic internships. And we have student leaders on campus who help you when you arrive. They're called peer mentors. And then you make a lot of friends and you get connected to Lane family. We have academic advisors focused just on the international students to help you, arrival assistance. We have an airport in our city and we have free airport pickup. When you come to the US, we want you to study, but we also want you to explore and learn outside of the classroom. So we love going together on trips to the Pacific Ocean. We go to NBA basketball games. Uh, we go shopping at the outlet malls. Oregon is a tax-free state, so the cost of living is lower, and we have great outlets. Oregon is full of beautiful nature. This is Crater Lake National Park, and we go together here, and we go hiking and boating. We go to waterfalls. This is a special picture of our international programs team. We are all there to support you when you come. And our job just focuses on the international students. And we do have staff who speak Spanish if you need some extra help. When you are a student at Lane, you can live in our Titan Court student apartments. They're fully furnished. You have a private bedroom, computer labs with free printing, study lounges, free bicycles to use. 
These are a few pictures. Our apartments also have full kitchens. A lot of our students save money by preparing their own meals. And you have a dining area and a, the beautiful kitchen. So when you apply to Lane, we do not require TOEFL, IELTS, or Duolingo, but it's highly recommended as your proof of English proficiency. You can be admitted without it. We do have a minimum age of 17. So you need to be 17 when you arrive. You can apply when you're 16, but you need to have had your 17th birthday before you come to campus. We have a $15, sorry, $50, $50 application processing fee, and you will need your transcripts, bank statement and financial documents, and your passport. I welcome you and I invite you to apply today. We welcome new students every September, January, March, and June. And we have had students arriving even during the COVID pandemic. Our application is completely online and I'm happy to help you with the process. So thank you again. There's my name and my email address again. Please feel free to write it down. And if you write to me, I can send you the scholarship application and, of course, answer any questions that you have. So at this time, I am really honored to hand this off to one of our fantastic university partners, University of Cincinnati. Our students uh, finish Lane and then they go on to thrive at the University of Cincinnati. So over to you, Jason. Thank you, Carla. I appreciate that. What a great overview of the, uh, the two plus part of our two plus two partnership. Uh, Carla and I have been working together for over four years now, uh, letting international students start at Lane in Oregon and finishing out in the city of Cincinnati. And uh, I first wanna highlight before I get into my uh, uh, school's presentation, that we do have a special scholarship opportunity for students who uh, finish their uh, two-year associate's degree at Lane Community College and graduate with at least a 3.2 cumulative college GPA out of a 4.0 scale. Uh, we will automatically consider a student for our highest UC Global Scholarship Award, which ranges between $5,000 and $15,000 per year. And that is, of course, renewable for the uh, life of the four-year bachelor degree program up to three years. Um, the University of Cincinnati is a large public research institution, which is um, around 45,949 students. So we have a lot of students, um, and 34,000 of those students are actually undergraduate students. Uh, 10,000 are going to be focusing on our master's and PhD level programs. So we're a, a overarching encompassing university located in the heart of the city of Cincinnati and around 3,500 international students attend our university. Um, so it makes it a pretty global campus. Uh, we are getting uh, a lot of those students from community colleges across the United States. So you are not alone in investigating and pursuing a very uh, worthwhile two plus two option. Uh, we have three different campuses that we teach classes on with the uh, predominant coursework that you will be uh, engaging in located in our uptown campus. Uh, we have over 350 different majors and degree programs that you could pursue, and that is in within at least 11 different colleges. Um, so we like to say at UC, if you don't know what you want to do, we probably have that degree. Uh, and that degree is going to be taught by internationally recognized faculty. Because we're a major research institution, we are attracting professors who are at the top of their uh, research uh, level, and they are actually attracted to the University of Cincinnati and have, have established themselves here. And you are gonna be exposed to those uh, faculty at a very intimate level because our student faculty ratio is very similar to a community college, especially when you consider how many students 
the, the university comprises are almost 50,000 students. We have 16 students to one faculty as a total faculty ratio. Um, and that means that you have open office hours uh, to uh, in, help you uh, study and, and get more additional support from your faculty, from your professors. If you don't remember anything else about the University of Cincinnati, uh, please get out your pens and paper. Uh, we are an institution that invented and are one of the best at cooperative education. I'm gonna talk a little bit about that later, but cooperative education means that you will be able to work full time in the field of study outside the university getting paid at least $10,000 per co-op rotation, which is one semester. You will work 40 hours a week and get paid for that experience. And that's a part of our, uh, uh, our, our degree programs here. So um, those degree programs that feature that experience are gonna be focused in the, the engineering uh, disciplines, the design and architecture disciplines, and it is optional but available for the College of Business, Arts and Sciences, and Information Technology. The city of Cincinnati is a, a medium-sized city uh, located in the Midwest part of the United States. And I believe, I'm pretty sure, that the distance between Lane Community College and University of Cincinnati is the largest distance between the three different partnerships that you'll be hearing from today. Uh, but it certainly does not mean that it is the most remote. Uh, I travel personally to Lane Community College every year uh, during normal times and um, have transfer fairs that I will, if you go to Lane Community College, most likely you will see me uh, at a transfer fair. And uh, we have that partnership as a very important piece, that collaborative nature and that I want to be on uh, Lane's campus to, to hear from you the students as, as, you, as you start your journey at the community college to tell you about the city of Cincinnati and the university, uh, which you know right now is, is one of the top five most affordable cities to live in. Uh, our cost of living like Eugene, Oregon is very low relative to the rest of the United States. Uh, the cost of gas is lower uh, than the uh, coastal sides. The cost of living uh, is lower, much lower than, uh, than some of the port cities. Um, so it is also a great place for young people to live because we have some of the uh, largest number of startup companies uh, as per capita for the city than most of the other cities uh, of relative to our size. Uh, not 400 of the Fortune 500 companies are have a presence in the city of Cincinnati, and nine of those companies are actually headquartered there. You'll see our contact information, but I'll give you my personal contact information uh, later on in the program. So cooperative education, um, it, what is it? Uh, what, what does it mean to work full time every other semester while you're studying at a university? It means that by the time you graduate, you'll have at least two years of paid working experience in the field of study that you're studying before you graduate. 85% of students who graduate from a co-op program get a job offer directly after they graduate full time from the company that they co-opt with after they graduate. You're putting real money into your pocket. And although you are extending your time to get the degree, it turns more into a two plus two plus two type of program. You're not spending more money because you're not paying tuition during those semesters. Again, here are some of the programs that we offer it. But on the next slide, I'll show you some of the uh, exciting uh, measure, uh, measures of success for these types of students. If I am a student who graduates from a co-op program, I'm getting paid an average of $46,000 per year. That's a lot higher than a typical entry-level salary. 78% of our students get job offers or have post-graduation plans after they graduate, but 85% of our co-op students have a job offer from one of the companies that they've experienced that co-op with. And if, and if you're wondering what kinds of companies are hiring our students, Hopefully you're familiar with a few of these companies, Apple, Coca-Cola, uh, Procter & Gamble, Marriott, Ralph Lauren, and, and Walt Disney, to name a few. Um, we have students who are employed in 32 different states 
while they're a UC student, they work in another state during a different semester. Um, and that allows a student to not only experience the city of Cincinnati, but the best of what the United States has to offer in relation to how you get a career started before you graduate with your bachelor's degree. Here's an example of a co-op schedule that a traditional first year engineering student or business student would take. Those red semesters that you see, you are not paying tuition. You are not stepping foot in a classroom. You're working full time, 40 hours a week at a company in your field of study, learning real world experiences on the job experiences. Now, as a transfer student in this particular situation, you would come in at year three, but it would still take you a few more years to graduate because you have to complete at least four to five semesters of co-op to get that required co-op component. Now, again, it's extending your time to graduate, but it's also giving you two years of paid work experience that you can put on your resume to graduate with a higher starting salary. Couple more of the companies um, that we have current students employed at now, um, but also, you know, it's not just big companies that hire our current students. We have over 1,500 different companies in 16 countries that students can study at full time uh, for 15 weeks each semester. And that includes startup companies, that includes uh, medium sized companies, and in fact, we encourage students to experience the full gambit of that particular careers company's uh, profile. So one semester you can work at a Fortune 500 multinational company such as Procter & Gamble, whose headquarters is in the city of Cincinnati. And the next semester you can work for a startup company who you know, has five employees and you can experience a really different uh, a co-op experience uh, by having our relationships and our partners being utilized in your initial career. One of our major colleges that we um, uh, in, in, admit a lot of international transfer students into is our College of Business. You can see the rankings of our different degree programs offered through this college below. Um, this is going to be our college that uh, hires them uh, or that ad, uh, admits the, the vast majority of our international students. Uh, and you can see that that it is very highly ranked and obviously 400 of the companies listed on the Fortune 500 company uh, uh, country has a presence in the city of Cincinnati and has a relationship with the university through this college from anything from accounting to finance, information systems and marketing. This is the college that um, the Lane Community College partnership with the University of Cincinnati is going to take advantage of the most. The first two years at Lane equal the first two years at any one of these business degree programs uh, so that you can start in your third year and, and get focused specifically in upper level business courses to get your career started. We do offer um, a application fee waiver for students who are at our partner community college of Lane. It's free to apply. Uh, contact me uh, at that email address uh, today if you want to learn more about that process. Um, and uh, the minimum GPA to transfer to UC is a 2.0. The average cost is around $26,994. Uh, the average housing cost, we do have uh, housing on our campus of around 15 to $20,000. So your average attendance cost is gonna be 46,000. But remember, you're guaranteed a scholarship if you graduate from our community college partner between 5,000 and 15,000. So we could get that tuition down to around uh, $30,000 on average. Whew. That's great. Thank you so much, Carla and Jason. We will ask to our team if we have some questions uh, from our audience at the attendees today. Yes, we have some questions. Uh, the first one is for um, Jason. A student is asking, as a transfer student, what type of financial aid would I be eligible for? Great question. As an international student, 
uh, we do offer the guaranteed scholarships uh, that are based completely exclusively on your performance at Lane Community College. Uh, of course, we offer this scholarship uh, to other transfer students. So if you don't choose to do the two plus two, uh, we would offer between $5,000 and $15,000 per year uh, renewable for three years. Great question. There is no separate scholarship application. When you apply to transfer, you fill out an online application. I'll waive the application fee if you're coming from Lane and we will give you a scholarship as well as an offer of admission at the same point in time. Thank you very much. And we do have a question for Carla. Uh, how do I choose my classes at the community college to meet the requirements to transfer to a university? Oh, thank you for that question. Yeah, so we have one-on-one -on -one academic advisors who can even help you before you arrive. They'll have virtual advising sessions. And they'll ask you a lot of questions about what your goals are, and they'll help you figure out where you should start. Now, in the first two years of a bachelor's degree, students do take general education. So there's a lot of students who take very similar classes, and that's a requirement of a bachelor's degree. So at Lane, you will have a lot of your general education classes, but you will also have some electives where you can choose what you are interested in. And like if you do business and wanna to go to University of Cincinnati, you will grab some really fantastic business classes that will fit like a cookie cutter directly to Jason's program. And we have articulation agreements with University of Cincinnati. So we will have exactly what classes you need to take to transfer successfully. But all that to say is we'll help you and we will guide you in the process. Thank you. Do we have time for one more question? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, for yes. one more. Okay. Uh, for Lane Community College, do you offer a nursing associate program? Yes, yes. We have several different options for nursing. Uh, Pre-nursing, if you want to go on for a bachelor's degree, registered nursing, and nursing assistant as well. Please feel free to write to Jason or I. Our names are there on the screen and our email addresses. We would both love to hear from you. And a big thank you to Education USA. Great job, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for your participation. And we're looking forward for uh, other participations as well and collaborations. Now, um, to the audience, very fast, um, you um, can see that you are getting information from our team through the chat. So if you want to copy paste as well, you uh, feel free to do that or to take screenshots from the information that is presented as well. Uh, now we have a pleasure to to introduce uh, the Dean of International Education at the Colleges of Contra Costa, Stephen Hales, who will start uh, talking about uh, their model uh, in, in, in Colleges of Contra Costa, and uh, followed by Laura Gale, International Admissions Representative at University of California, Santa Cruz. Thank you very much for being here with us. Everybody see my slide okay? Yes, it's Great. perfect. So Marta, thank you again for to you and Education USA for organizing this great event. Um, Carla and Jason, thank you for teeing it off here with a very interesting and uh, very helpful introduction to one two plus two pathway. Um, my colleague Laura and I are gonna talk about a uh, pathway a little bit closer geographically uh, in California um, and uh, this is called the Transfer Pathways from California Community Colleges to the University of California. So I'll just go over six uh, parts of the presentation today. Uh, one is kind of a refresh. You've heard a lot already from Carla and Martha about community colleges. Um, secondly, underline what I see as advantages of community colleges as well as misconceptions about community colleges. And then we'll focus on California 
community colleges, and then more specifically as they relate to transfer options to public universities in California. And then lastly, uh, I will share a little bit of information about our family of colleges, uh, specifically where we're located, um, value and options. So a lot of people call the US community colleges the best kept secret about the US higher education system. Uh, and there are a lot of them. Uh, as Carla already mentioned, there are over 1,100 in the United States. Uh, and nearly half of all uh, US undergraduates that get bachelor's degrees actually start at community colleges. So again, to reemphasize the point, it's a very common pathway for American students to get a bachelor's degree. And these are mostly public institutions of higher education. Uh, one point not mentioned uh, on my slide is that international students are enrolled at over 700 community colleges, so not all of them. And then five uh, aspects or advantages really stand out to me uh, in terms of what's a, a benefit of community college. Number one, uh, admission requirements. You've already heard from um, Martha and Carla as well that community colleges have less strict admission requirements. So for example, the vast majority of programs at community colleges in the US do not require a standardized test like SAT or ACT. Uh, in addition, the English language proficiency requirement to be admitted to a community college is typically quite a bit lower than it is to be admitted to a four-year institution. So for example, in California, I believe the average TOEFL, internet-based TOEFL score is about 54, um, if you contrast that with a four-year university. Also lower tuition costs. So typically a community college is going to be $10,000 or less per academic year and a total of about $20,000. Some US public universities uh, may be comparable to that, but the majority are gonna be quite a bit more expensive. Um, a third advantage is that classes are always taught by full professors because faculty at community colleges are not hired to do research and publish, they're hired to teach. And so students will never have a graduate student teaching a class, they'll always be taught by professors. And then with regard to class size, um, average number of students typically is about 25 to 30 in class. And what this means is the characteristic for the classroom interactions will be a little more student-centered than it would be in a classroom with 300, 400 students. Um, and this is for general education courses, which is the common buffet of courses across the USA. So that's very unusual at most four-year institutions. And then lastly, I think probably most compelling is statistically, it's actually easier to transfer to a lot of four-year institutions in the US after starting at a community college than it is from directly from high school from abroad. And I will share some statistics as it relates to that point um, for our institutions in California. And misconceptions. So there's not a lot of awareness about community colleges outside of the US. And what's more, there are misunderstandings about the system. Um, one false perception is that because of the lower cost and because of the easier admission requirements that the quality of education is lower or the quality of the students is not on par with those uh, going to four years. And that's just, there's no data to support that. Um, secondly, community colleges are not part of global rankings that you see come out every year. And so therefore they may not be viewed as quite as prestigious as many four-year institutions. And third, uh, contrary to what many may think, um, there are numerous services for international students at community colleges. And I will revisit this point towards the end um, highlighting some of our services. And these range from immigration advising to transfer services to help you transfer to Cincinnati, Santa Cruz and other universities. Um, and then a fourth common misconception is that community colleges are just commuter campuses or just maybe a few buildings where students go to class, take classes and go home. Um, and that's very far from the truth as well. Um, 
many community colleges in California, for example, that I visited, including ours, are really like a beehive of activity with students really engaged in student clubs, working on campus, et cetera. And that's something that actually surprised me coming from a four-year university to our community college setting. And then fifth, there is an incorrect idea that students will have limited academic or professional options afterwards. And I will address uh, as well, Laura, the transfer options in California on the academic side. Uh, Carla already talked about optional practical training. And so that is one advantage for every degree students earn in the US, an associate degree, they have the, the option, the benefit of applying for off-campus work. But there's also something called curricular practical training um, which students can do during their studies. So for example, we have a student computer science major who is working for a web startup company in San Francisco. She's earning credit for that as well. So now I'll shift to California. Um, and probably the most important point of the presentation is that community colleges in California provide one of the most affordable and likely paths to prestigious four-year institutions in California and outside. Uh, in California, here is a map. It's a little bit overwhelming to see because of the detail, um, but I think one key takeaway is you will notice the majority of community colleges are kind of clustered to grouped in urban areas and but so those are the majority um, but there are also other colleges that have a very different setting that are more rural so that's important for students uh, when shopping trying to find what's the best fit for you what type of environment you prefer and also another point is that the rural campuses are more likely to have on-campus housing versus the urban only about, I think, 27% of community colleges actually have on-campus housing. So just a, an FYI for all of you uh, considering that. And then now I want to look at uh, the California system more specifically. Um, there are now 116 community colleges. So there's been one born since my presentation slide was made here. Um, over 2 million students, which is the largest system of higher education in the United States um, is open admission. Uh, basically what this means is if students meet our admission requirements, we are obligated to admit them. There's no discussion about whether we should admit a student. So if they meet, if they submit an application, provide an application fee, uh, show their high school transcript and show their English language proficiency and it meets our requirement, we must admit them um, if our minimum age is 16 as well. Um, if they're 18, they're actually automatically admitted to California community colleges with or without high school. Um, so that's part there. Priority admission, this is something um, I think Laura may talk about more, but that's one advantage of, of essentially making an early reservation to the UC and CSU system in terms of transfers. And on the transfer note, um, about 30% 30, 30 of the alumni or graduates of the University of California system come from California community colleges. And about 51% of the students who graduate from California state universities come from California community colleges. Um, more specifically, California community colleges transfer about 17% every year to the UC, University of California system about 58, 60% to the California State University system, uh, about 9% to in-state private institutions. I think you'll hear a presentation tomorrow or the next day about that. Um, and then actually about 16% of students at California community colleges transfer outside of the state. Uh, and this is something that I will show you about ours as well. So this map shows the public university transfer options in California. And there are three public higher education systems in California. So in addition to the 116 community colleges, uh, we have 23 CSUs, or as you can see in the map, California state universities. So that's kind of the another level in the a third level would be University of California. There are technically 10 but only nine of them are undergraduate. So in short, there are 32 
public universities that have undergraduate programs in California. And I think there are two really uh, central points to highlight here about this system. Number one, all the college level four credit courses at California Community Colleges transfer to the UC system, the University of California and the California State University system. That's not necessarily true for students from community colleges outside of California. And then secondly, this is very um, reassuring and compelling for parents and students, is that there are two types of transfer agreement guarantees for students from California community colleges to the CSU and UC system. Um, these guarantees cover 29 out of the 32 public universities. Uh, one type is for the California state system. And just briefly, uh, if students have at least a 2.0 GPA, which is about a C average, most schools or majors require a higher GPA, but that's the minimum. Um, they can get a what's called a degree with a guarantee and based on one of 40 majors can transfer to a number of the 23 campus CSU system. The other one which my colleague Laura will really go into detail about is the TAG or transfer admission guarantee. And this is one example of why the state system is magical here. Um, Sorry, the clock is counting down. <laughs> so um, the the tag is for um, all but all but three of the UC system, and students have to have at least a 3.0 GPA, um, and they can get a transfer guarantee, and that's included for all majors. Um, Martha, the clock is counting down, so I wasn't sure if that's uh, how many minutes I have. <laughs> it is a uh, time for it, the, the next uh, institution. Oh. So I'm going to go ahead and um, turn it over to my colleague, Laura, and um, she can um, talk about the UC Santa Cruz partnership. And then also just to let you know, here's my contact information and I look forward to answering any questions you may have. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. Thanks so much, Stephen, and thanks, uh, Martha, very much. Uh, thanks, Stephen, for that introduction to the UC. Um, we heard earlier from Jason about one UC, the University of Cincinnati, and now we're going to talk about another UC. So, um, the University of California. Okay, this is what I'd like to talk about today. Um, first, I'd like to introduce you to the UC system as a whole, and then um, I'd like to introduce you to my campus, UC Santa Cruz. So international students are usually most familiar with UC Berkeley and UCLA, but I do hope that you'll consider other UC campuses as well. All of the University of California campuses offer a culture of academic excellence, since all are top level research universities. And five of the University of California campuses have also been specially designated as Hispanic serving institutions, including my own campus, UC Santa Cruz. And what this means is that we have high Latinx student populations and special programs to support the success of students from Latin American backgrounds. So at any one of our Hispanic serving UC campuses, you will find many Spanish speaking staff members to assist you along your higher education path. So what else should you consider when you're thinking about a transfer campus to apply to? One consideration is the size of the campus. So UC Berkeley, UCLA, UC Irvine, and UC Davis all have more than 30,000 students, and they're great choices for students who like big city environments. On the other hand, if you feel that you might um, find a very large university hard to navigate, UC Merced or UC Santa Cruz might be good options for you, since these are the smallest universe, uh, UC campuses. Another consideration is the majors offered at each campus. So let's say you're interested in engineering. You should explore the websites of each of the campuses to see which specialties they offer. If you're interested in chemical engineering, for example, you'd want to take a look at UC Davis. If you're interested in robotics engineering, UC Santa Cruz is a great choice because that's one of the specialties that we offer that a lot of other campuses don't offer. 
And as you no doubt already know, the University of California is widely seen as the most highly regarded public research university system in the world. And on average, um, our graduates earn $10,000 more a year than graduates of other four-year colleges and universities in California. So the UC provides a great return on investment for our graduates. And there's good news for those of you who are interested in more than one University of California campuses. There's actually just one single application for all nine UC campuses. So you only have to fill out your application once. And here down at the bottom, you see the web address to apply. Um, the application for fall admission is normally due about November 30th each year, but several campuses also accept applications for winter quarter or spring semester admission. And all University of California campuses have the same basic admissions requirements. Um, you need to complete two UC transferable English courses, one UC transferable math course, and four general education classes in at least seven different, uh, at least two different areas. Sorry, this is what we call our seven course pattern. And um, as Stephen said earlier, in order to complete um, the courses that you need to transfer, really your best plan is to attend a California community college first if you want to transfer to a um, University of California campus. Now, you could choose to go to Lane or to another um, community college anywhere in the US. Um, but it's much easier to transfer from a California community college, um, such as the colleges of Contra Costa, um, because uh, we have agreements with California community colleges about which courses transfer. So it's much smoother and easier. Um, we don't require you to complete a full associate's degree in order to transfer. You just need that seven course pattern, minimum 60 transferable semester units, and any required major preparation, which I'll talk a little bit about more later. International students need a minimum overall GPA of 2.0. If you attended a high school where English was not the language of instruction, you will also need to meet the English proficiency requirement. And you can do that by simply taking the two um, UC transferable courses in English composition. Some campuses require that you have minimum C grades, and some campuses require that you have minimum B grades in, in order to meet the English proficiency requirement. So check with the campus to find out um, what grades you need to have. If you need to get minimum B grades and you haven't quite um, uh, got those grades in the um, English composition courses, you also have the option of taking the TOEFL or the IELTS. And we do accept the TOEFL special home edition, so you don't need to go to a testing center in person right now to take the, the exam. Another advantage of attending a California community college, like the Colleges of Contra Costa, and Stephen already um, introduced this wonderful program that we have, is the transfer admission guarantee. And just like the name says, it offers guaranteed admission at select UC campuses. And this program is only available for students attending a community college in California. The tag is available for the six UC campuses that you see here. Um, UC Berkeley, UCLA, and UC San Diego do not offer this program. And each campus has its own specific requirements for the tag, such as the minimum GPA required um, and any um, special major preparation. And so you can check out the uh, specific requirements for each campus on, their, on the campus websites. The TAP, or the Transfer Admission Planner, is a free online resource just for community college students in California that will help you prepare for the TAG program. Your academic counselor at your community college will also help you with the TAG and all transfer requirements. Of course, um, prospective students are always interested in knowing how much it costs to attend a UC. And here's an example of an estimated budget. This is based on the cost of attendance at UC Santa Cruz. And the costs vary a little bit between the different campuses. Um, the costs for um, housing, for example, can vary significantly. Um, but the UC non-resident tuition is exactly the same at all University of California campuses. And you can find more about the estimated international student budget on each one of the websites of each one of the UC campuses. But um, as Stephen mentioned, you can save a lot of money by studying at a community college first and then transferring. Now I'd like to introduce you to UC Santa Cruz, my campus, and our motto is different by design. 
One thing that makes us different is our extraordinary location. We have a truly spectacular campus. We're set in the middle of a redwood forest with panoramic views of the Pacific Ocean. We're located about an hour and a half south of San Francisco and about five and a half hours north of Los Angeles. And we offer that classic California lifestyle. We're two miles from the beach and temperatures are really comfortable year round due to the fresh ocean breezes. UC Santa Cruz is a great place if, to come if you want to be surrounded by nature, but still very close to all the big cities of the Bay Area. And we are the closest University of California campus to Silicon Valley. We're located within an hour of the world's leading technology and biotechnology firms like Google, Apple, Facebook, and Genentech. So that means that our students have a lot of internship opportunities right here in the local region. Here you see some indicators of our academic reputation. You see Santa Cruz ranked among the top 30 for undergraduate teaching and the top 15 in the world for research impact. When you combine these rankings, this places us alongside elite private universities like Stanford and Princeton. And we are also ranked last year as the number 76 university in the entire world by US News and World Report. Now I'll tell you about some of the academic programs that are special to UC Santa Cruz. Um, naturally, since we are uh, close to Silicon Valley, we have strong programs in technology related for, um, fields. We have 10 different computer science and technology programs, and we're particularly known for our computer game design programs. We actually have two different undergraduate majors for games and playable media. We have five different business and economics related programs. Business management economics is one of our most popular majors, and this is one that students interested in business administration typically choose. We also have a global economics major for those interested in international business. And we have a business major that is unique to UC Santa Cruz and is focused on the tech industry, and that's called technology and information management. We have seven different medical and biological related majors. One is our uh, biomolecular engineering and bioinformatics major, which combines biology and computer science fields. UC Santa Cruz is a pioneer in this area since one of our professors was the first researcher in the entire world to successfully sequence the entire human genome. And another of our popular majors amongst international students is human biology, which is our main pre-med ma major. One important thing to keep in mind if you're interested in applying to UC Santa Cruz is that we have some additional criteria beyond the minimum UC admissions requirements for students who are interested in applying for some of our most popular majors, what we call our screening majors. And we'll just take a quick look at one of the screening majors here, economics. And as you can see here, you would need to complete three courses before you transfer in order to successfully transfer with an economics um, major. And here you can see some of the courses that you would need to take at Diablo Valley College if you decided to go to the colleges of Contra Costa before applying to UC Santa Cruz. We also have many non-screening majors, and these are um, mainly in the humanities and arts, um, but these are also some of our strongest and most popular programs. Film and digital media is actually one major that is uh, particularly popular amongst international students. And then finally, um, I'd like to talk about scholarships. Um, and this information relates specifically to UC Santa Cruz because UC Santa Cruz is one of the only University of California campuses that offers scholarships to international students. At most UC campuses, international students are unfortunately not eligible for scholarships or financial aid. But as you can see here, we have two different scholarships that international students are eligible for. And for these scholarships, there's no separate application. You're all automatically be considered for these scholarships based on the information in your University of California application. And I can see that I'm, I've run out of time. If you have any more questions about these things, um, please uh, put a question in the chat and I'd be happy to go into any more detail about these. And um, I wanna thank you all for being here. It was wonderful that um, all of you joined us today and you came to meet us virtually. And I thank um, everyone at Education in the USA for putting together this wonderful program. Thank you so much, uh, Stephen and Laura. Uh, maybe we can, uh, if there is uh, a question, we can go through that. Yes. So we have one for Stephen. What are the documents I need to submit as part of my application process to Contra Costa Community Colleges? Right, there are just four things. One is application. And there's also an application fee. Students can do that online uh, through our website. Um, number two is uh, high school transcripts. 
So basically we need evidence that a student has finished high school. Um, three is English language proficiency, uh, evidence of that. So a TOEFL, IELTS, at home edition as, as Laura mentioned. Um, and then, so that's really for admission. The fourth piece would be the financial support. So that is it. There's no other tests or anything else. Thank you. And we have one for Laura. Um, are there any additional documents I need to submit to transfer to UC Santa Cruz? Great, thank you for that question. So uh, initially, when you submit your University of California application, you don't need to submit transcripts. Um, you just need to fill out the, the online UC application. Later, once you get offered admission at one of the UC campuses, then we will ask you for official transcripts and any, and any test scores or other documents that we need. Um, but in November, you just need to fill out the application. Thank you very much. That's all the questions that we have right now. Super, thank you very much, uh, Anita. Thank you. And now we have the pleasure to introduce to the audience um, uh, Frank Jurkovic, uh, International Programs Director uh, from St. Petersburg uh, College and Andrea Davis, International Recruitment Liaison in University of Central Florida. Welcome Frank and Andrea, thank you very much. All right, thank you, Marta, and thank you, uh, Education USA. We'll uh, jump right into it. I'm here joined with Andrea Davis. Um, we are actually from the state of Florida. Florida, everyone is very familiar with that. We are uh, almost neighbors. And we are going to talk a little bit about um, how you can start at St. Petersburg College or a community college and transfer to a university. So why do students choose St. Pete College, St. Petersburg College, or community colleges in general in the state of Florida? What, what's, what's the big uh, reason why they come to us? So a lot of it has to do with uh, our affordability. It is approximately 50% less than state uh, universities. So that's a huge price cost savings for students. Uh, also many scholarships, and we also have something that's called the linkages, which Andrew will talk about a little bit later as well. But when you come, certain states or uh, countries around the world are allowed to get in-state tuition. So once you become a student your first semester, um, there are very uh, certain countries in Central America that can apply for a special scholarship to receive in-state tuition, which is about uh, a 65% savings, so significant savings on money. We at St. Petersburg College have lots of campuses and learning centers in our area, so lots of space. We also have, as, as you've heard from other community colleges, small classes, about 20 students to one um, professor, so that's very good. Our professors are, are full-time, have PhD, doctor degrees, and we have easy transfers to many universities, such as the University of Central Florida. So why else do reasons why people choose CP College from around the uh, area, around the world, is basically we have associate's degrees, we also have an English program, and we do also offer some limited bachelor's degrees. So if you didn't have really good English, you could start off in our English program, get an associate's degree, and then transfer to a university such as University of Central Florida. We offer associates mainly, but we also have some bachelor's degrees. These are some of the popular majors, as you can see. We have business, education, communications, science, mathematics, technology. So many of the, of the degrees that you see uh, at other colleges, we have available at St. Petersburg uh, College as well. Um, we talked a little bit about cost. So what does it cost for tuition for one year for St. Petersburg College? That's two semesters. It's approximately uh, a little over $9,000 for two semesters. Uh, that's just for the courses. Uh, and that's approximately uh, four courses uh, each, about, you know, four courses a um, semester and over two semesters. We also have payment plans. So if you want a the, the breakup in multiple payments over several months, you can do that. We have payment plans available for students. Also scholarships, as mentioned. Here's kind of an estimate of what it costs for a state university versus going to a community college or going to St. Petersburg College uh, as well. Uh, so it's about, it's pretty almost half price, as you can see right here. When to apply. So many community colleges want you to apply several months before the uh, semester starts. But many of the community colleges, as, as well as we are, we're very flexible. So if a student comes to us maybe two months before classes start, 
we can usually get them into the college in time. We've even had situations where students come to us maybe a couple of weeks before classes start, and if all their documents together and they can move very fast, we can get them into the system uh, very quickly and have them start classes. So I'll give you an example. We started classes around January 10th. We had a student come to us uh, before Christmas, before in middle of December, and we were able to get them in in time because they had all their documents and uh, and uh, things. Everything was transferred. Everything was ready to go. So. We do accept students past the deadline uh, many times. So where is St. Petersburg College? Where are we located? Well, you might recognize this. This is Florida. Many of you are down here uh, over this area as well. Uh, we are located right here, and so is the University of Central Florida, very close to us, you'll see. This little finger that comes out right here, this is called uh, Pinellas County. St. Petersburg is one of the cities, but as you can see, we have locations everywhere. Uh, in this little area, there's about 1 million people live here. So we have lots of uh, locations for you to take class. Clearwater, you might have heard of Clearwater that is located here. St. Petersburg is at the bottom here, but we have lots of uh, campuses to choose from for locations. And very close to Tampa International Airport, about 20 minutes by car, which is a very large airport. So what is in St. Petersburg? What are we, what, what's it? We're very close, about one hour away from Disney World, which you'll hear about um, from Andrea. We are called the Sunshine City. Why are we called that? We have the record for the most number of sunshine days in our city. So it's very, very interesting. We have the Guinness Book of World Records for that. Uh, we also have uh, lots of downtown area in St. Petersburg, uh, water everywhere. This is one of our beaches, very close, only a few minutes away from one of our campuses. Uh, so lots of, lots of opportunities. Downtown St. Pete, we have lots of uh, population, very diverse people from all over the world. Um, everything you know from Europe Spain, uh, and from Spanish countries, Latin America. We also have a lot of Europeans, Asians. We have a lot of uh, different variety of people from different parts of the world uh, located. So very diverse population we have in our area. Right now we have about 150 international students from 55 countries. So very large number of students from all over the world. We also have um, this new facility. This is our international programs office is housed in this building. It was just finished six months ago. And it uh, has our tutoring center and things like that in, as well in there. And so this is our international club. They meet uh, several times a month and have different guest speakers go on different uh, trips and things like that. Right now they are meeting uh, online a lot just because of the, of, of the virus situation, but we do have classes on campus and we are accepting uh, new international students to our college. This is a photo of our, one of our campuses to kind of give you an idea of what it looks like very much uh, like the traditional university at a, uh, but we are a community college and we service primarily uh, students uh, in that uh, area in that, that thing, but we do have international students. We are the oldest community college or state college in Florida, 1927, so almost hundred years old. We have about 20, 27,000 students that are spread out all over our campuses. So a large number of students um, on our campuses. We have over 100 student clubs, everything from student government to you know, medical clubs, all kinds of different clubs that students can participate in. So much what you'd see on a traditional university we have at our college. So the next steps, what would it take if you wanted to apply? As you heard on, uh, just previously about what's, you have to complete the application, pay our application fee, submit some financial documents and immigration documents such as passport and things like that, uh, transcripts, which would be your high school. If you have high school, uh, you have to get that translated. Your financial documents, which make sure that you can afford and, and support your courses and things. And then we actually have something, we have our online language exam that is free as well as our online placement exam. And the wonderful thing about this is this can be taken at, in your house, from your house on your um, computer, as long as you have a web, web camera and you have a internet connection, we are, giving the placement tests and English tests for you at home. You don't have to travel to any type of testing center and you do not have to wait until you arrive in the US. You can take it before you come to us. So that is a very nice convenient that we have um, changed to with the virus to help students out uh, with testing. So you've graduated from St. Petersburg College and now what, now what do you do? You've graduated you uh, now get to go transfer over to University of Central Florida. So I'm turning it over to Andrea and she's gonna talk a little bit about um, University of Central Florida and how you go from St. Pete College. All right, thanks Frank. 
So for the final presentation for you this evening, we're going to take you from SPC all the way over to UCF, which is a two hour drive across the great Central Florida region. So you get to experience two wonderful cities in Central Florida on the coast with SPC, as well as the fantastic city of Orlando, a major tourist destination in the United States. So we welcome you to come visit Central Florida and our university. Here is a brief overview of um, UCF. Some of our big picture facts are that we are one of the largest universities in the nation. Um, that is over 69,000 students. So UCF is big, um, but for us, big stands for opportunities. We're also one of the most innovative universities in the nation with not only incredible research institutions, but also unique degree designs. Um, one example is video game design and interactive media. We're also one of the nation's most affordable universities by Forbes. We know that by pursuing this two plus two option, you are seeking um, the most cost saving affordable option for you. And you can understand that universities across the United States can be quite expensive. So by choosing UCF as your plus two, um, you're ensuring that you are pursuing even more cost savings. So to go through again this two plus two program, how it works, you've done the initial application to SPC, you're working on completing that Associate of Arts for two years. During that EA degree, once you reach a certain point, it will be time to apply to UCF, submit that transfer application, and you can continue on to a bachelor's degree for two years, entering in at a junior level or third year at UCF. So let's look more specifically at the transfer admission requirements. So typically most transfer students will apply to UCF after earning at least 45 credits. And within those credits, you need to ensure that you've taken at least two college level English composition courses, two college level math courses, and at least a 2.0 GPA out of 4.0. So ensure that you take those courses early and do well, because if you can achieve a B or higher in your English composition courses, that will also meet your English language proficiency requirement. Of course, we have other ways to meet that requirement as well, but this way you can satisfy it just with your regular transcripts. But the most important transfer admission requirement to UCF is that you have that diploma from SPC. You achieve your Associate of Arts degree and you graduate. That is the number one criteria here. So to look at the process overall, you're going to start by submitting that online application with a $30 application fee. You'll need to submit official transcripts from all colleges attended. Most likely that will be SPC, but you may have some prior university credits in your countries in Latin America or another college. You'll need to submit those as well. And finally, um, you'll need to submit those international documents. As you know, as an international student, you'll come in on an F1 visa. We will need to transfer those visa documents from SPC to UCF. So now, as we've talked a lot about these transfer benefits, but just to hit it home, as a two plus two student entering UCF, this application does not require an SAT or ACT. You don't need to be thinking about your high school GPA anymore. And you'll be able to take advantage of that lower cost, the smaller class sizes, the English language support that you'll achieve at SPC. If you were to apply direct entry to UCF for all four years, you would need those test scores, those GPAs, essays, letters of recommendation, but through this transfer process, UCF is just evaluating, did you succeed at SPC? And are you ready to continue on to a full bachelor's degree? So at the end of your program, you will earn two credentials, the associates and the bachelors. Most importantly, our scholarship opportunities and two that will be particular for this audience today are our Florida Costa Rica Linkage Institute and the Latin American and Caribbean Scholarship. So this first scholarship actually pertains to both SPC and UCF and the Latin American Caribbean Scholarship 
will be for UCF. So these are two options to take advantage of an out-of-state tuition waiver. You may be familiar with looking at university websites and seeing out-of-state or international tuition versus domestic tuition, or in our case, Florida resident tuition. This tuition difference can be quite substantial. So by applying for these scholarships, you will be able to receive a tuition rate as a Florida resident changing from about $9,000 tuition to $2,600 tuition. So you're saving $12,000 to $14,000 per year. So it's important to keep in mind that these scholarship opportunities are for once you've been accepted to UCF. So once you've been accepted, please feel free to reach out to me um, or to SPC to reach out to Frank for that Florida Costa Rica Language Institute if you're a citizen of Costa Rica. So now, what can you study while you're at UCF? Uh, UCF was founded in the 1960s as part of the US government space program. We're about an hour away from Cape Canaveral where historic space launches were taking off the coast. So engineering, especially aerospace, continue to be very popular at UCF. Of course, we have a whole range of top quality business programs and our Rosen College of Hospitality Management has its own campus that is styled like a resort over in the tourism center of Orlando where students can take advantage of an incredible professional network in the city of Orlando. I mentioned computer science earlier with video game design and some top notch equipment at the UCF downtown campus and also uh, for those interested in biomedical sciences or biology nursing, we are about to open a brand new teaching hospital on our Lake Nona Health Sciences campus that will focus on simulation and healthcare. But we offer over 215 different degree programs at the bachelor's, master's, and doctoral level. So we encourage you to check out our website and find a program that best fits your interests. Of course, uh, we are very proud to have a number of, of partnerships where you can pursue internships, research projects, summer jobs, and employment after graduation. One example I'll give is if you, if you actually come and visit us, which I encourage you to, and come and visit our engineering building, you will find a car from the roller coaster called Space Mountain. So we have a long standing relationship with the, Dis the Walt Disney Company. Um, in this particular case, we had engineering students help design the safety belt feature. But there are a number of ongoing projects that students can be a part of. Not only this, but we do have a Central Florida Research Park just to the side of our UCF campus that houses over 150 companies that are seeking UCF students to come and join and work for them. And finally, we want you to study hard and work hard, but also enjoy an American university experience. So we offer over 700 or nearly 700 student clubs and organizations that you can join in any topic you can think of, whether that's the Latin American culture club, different levels of intensity for soccer or um, different sports. And for the Harry Potter fans out there, we even have our own Quidditch team. We are Division I Sports, which is the top tier in the United States. So you can come and get involved in school spirit, attend our football games, basketball games, and our impressive stadiums. But we also house concerts and events where celebrities like Taylor Swift or Kevin Hart will come and perform for our students, where your only ticket is your UCF student ID. So if you walk away today thinking UCF has an opportunity for you, I encourage you to check out this two plus two program. So at this point, um, I'd like to see if there are any questions. Thank you very much, Andrea. Annie, do we have any questions um, for Frank and Andrea? Yes. Uh, for Frank, what housing options would I have at St. Petersburg College? Yes, yeah, so good question. Um, let me flip the next slide here. Um, so as far as housing, um, we unfortunately do not have any dormitories at St. Petersburg College, but we have lots of um, connections with uh, apartments and things like that uh, right next to the campus or right across the street. Uh, we also have some homestay options as well if students wanna stay with a family, but we also have apartments and things uh, very close to campus within walking distance. We also have, um, as part of being a student at our college, 
you can ride the public public bus system anywhere you want in the city for free. All you have to do is show your student ID and you can ride for free uh, every day, all day. Okay. And another one for Frank, which is the range of age? So you can admit a student in a community college. So we, don't, we have or open access, which you might have heard earlier. So we, uh, as long as students have their documents and your know, high school diploma and things like that, uh, we, they can uh, become a student of ours. So that's the main thing, just making sure they have graduated. Um, but if students want to take some classes, uh, you know, distance learning, that is also meaning that if they're not in the U.S., but they want to take classes from home, we can help them with that as well. If they're not uh, graduated yet from high school, there is options for that as well. But uh, as long as they have their documents and are able to start classes, we can admit them. Thank you. And we have one for Andrea. How do you qualify for the Latin America and Caribbean scholarship? Linkage scholarships, do I need to submit a separate application? Would I qualify as a transfer? Absolutely. So first of all, you would most definitely qualify as a transfer student. What you would need to do is after you've been accepted, you've submitted your online application and your transcripts and you've been accepted to UCF, feel free to contact me. We'll have our, we have our contact information at the end. Um, there are application cycles for these two opportunities because you'd be able to apply to renew for them each year as a UCF student. So in order to apply for the Costa Rica Linkage Institute, you must be a citizen of Costa Rica. For the Latin American scholarship, you need to be a citizen from a whole list of Latin American universe, uh, countries and um, maintain at least a 3.0 GPA for this scholarship. But I encourage you, we have coordinators for both of these scholarships. So please reach out, um, contact us, and we're happy to share this information. Thank you very much. And yeah, thank we you. cannot. Uh, okay. yes, I'm sorry. Those are all the questions that we have. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. Thank well, uh, we want to thank you. Thank you all, uh, Carla, uh, Jason, Stephen, um, also Laura, and Frank and Andrea. Thank you very much for this valuable information for our audience today. We want as well to invite the audience of today to continue this showcase tomorrow, uh, February the 3rd, we will have these institutions. Remember that not all the information is the same. That is very useful for you to make a choice. You have a lot of opportunities and a lot of options of uh, institutions that you may find as your best fit, but for that you will need to make your search, you will need to read a lot of information, and this kind of um, webinars, this kind of showcases uh, allow you to to um, know about these details and specifics from our representatives uh, from the different institutions, you can reach them as well. Uh, they have provided uh, their contact information for further questions. So that is awesome. And then uh, the, last day to, uh, the last day of the showcase is February the 4th, and we have the participation of other inst different institutions. So we encourage all of you to, to come back. We will be very happy uh, to, to have uh, the audience um, visiting us virtually again, same time uh, and same Zoom link. You will be able to uh, attend with the same link to all days uh, during this showcase. As well to the representatives, you are welcome if you want to visit us tomorrow as well. Um, and looking forward to, to more collaborations in the future for the students. Uh, we are looking forward as well to make these uh, dreams of the prospective students to, to become true. And um, we also uh, tell our audience to look for, so, uh, for Education USA from in, in your country, uh, look for social media because then you will have more information. Um, a lot of the events are posted there, a lot of information um, that is also uh, relevant to, to your uh, objectives of studying the US. We are always giving this information through social media as well, so follow us. And 
And uh, here is our official website where you can find as well more information about how to um, to start this process uh, for applying um, to the to a US uh, university. Uh, you will find as well in our official website, educationusa.state.gov, your um, advising centers, the one that is closest to you in your country. And don't hesitate to contact uh, our team of advisors because we are here to, uh, to guide you and um, as well to make it easy, easy through this process of uh, application for admission. Thank you very much uh, to everyone and, and looking forward to see you later and tomorrow uh, as well to continue this showcase. Thank you very much.